Okay, I will start out by drawing this. I'm going to click the front plane. I'll start drawing a line. I've gone ahead and drawn this already just so I can try and do it more quickly. So I'll just click on the center point to start and draw in my overall shape. And so this, I'll just kind of explain what I'm doing. These look like they might be snapping to where I don't want them, but we'll fix it in a second. So click this line, we'll make it horizontal. And so now I can add dimensions, make it 1.5 inches overall. We'll make total height is three eighths of an inch, point three seven five. The so this is going to be used on the whiteboard is eighth of an inch thick, and so I will make. I'm just going straight eighth of an inch. It's actually a little bit thicker. I think it's 130 thousandths, but that's fine. Eighth of an inch is fine. This gap right here is just so it clears the corner. So I'll make that 3 sixteenths. So whenever it prints, it gives it some relief since we're putting a, a square object in. If we had a round corner, you know, and there's other ways to do it, but this is fine just to cut out. Let's see. What else we got to do? Okay, and so this over here, I'm going to do three quarters of an inch. And that should be it. So everything looks to be, nope, this is not defined. So we'll go, let's say, doesn't have to be a lot there. That should be perfectly fine. Now we'll extrude this E, click the surface. I like doing symmetric extrusions and then five eighths of an inch. We'll go ISO view. So now we need to put a hole for, I'll be using a wood screw. It's technically a, a number six screw. So let me, Select this. I'm going to draw a circle. So what I what I always like to do. There's a couple ways to define this circle. If I click this point, and I can click this point, Command since I'm on a Mac, I can make these um, horizontal. Or what I like to do is actually draw a line. So L, I'll draw a line. Let me hit the line and click X to make it a construction line. Click the construction line and select horizontal vertical. So that just lets me see that this is tied to this. It's I do that. It's just how, how I guess I learned CAD. So the screw, I measure the screw diameter. And you can uh, find, just Google it if you don't have a screw. But this screw is approximately 156.156 inches. And I will clear it out a little bit. So I'm going to give 20 thousandths clearance. And that's diameter. So we can do math in here. 156 plus 0 0.020. That should be fine. We'll print it and see you know, how it is. And if it's not good, then next time we'll, we'll add some more. So... Well, this should be good. So that's 3 eighths of an inch, which is halfway through here. So E for extrude. Cut through. So now uh, we'll start adding chamfers. I'll go ahead and add the chamfer to the extrude. Well, not the extrude to the cut. And so the chamfer, since we're using a wood screw, the there's the head of the screw has to, to go somewhere. So this is actually 82 degrees is what the actual angle is, but 45 degrees works just fine. 
and 45 degrees since this is eighth of an inch over it'll be eighth of an inch down as well if if anybody knows how to to i looked up this but i didn't really see answers i can't you know if say if i go 30 degrees it won't let me flip which 30 degrees so you know where's 30 degrees taken from so 30 degrees is taken from um, this surface, but if I wanted to take it from the vertical surface, which would be like 60 degrees from this surface, I can't do that. If, if you know how to do that, please let me know. I'm curious. I know in SolidWorks it's real easy, but it's just a little bit different in, in Fusion. So the head, 125 is, it could be a little bit deeper just by, I just measured it real quick. So I'll make it a little bit deeper than this just because and make sure it's not you know a little over flush so we can say like 0.135 what does that look like should be all right i mean we'll just have to try it out so let's go to add some more chamfers i'm just doing this because i think it looks cool that's that's it and so these chamfers i think 60 degrees should look all right too much So it looks all right. It's cutting into this, so I might actually do less than that. So that's not cutting into it. And so right there, uh, what I did, this kind of annoyed me earlier. On Mac, if you hit Command key, I guess on Windows it'd be a Control key. So if you hold Control down, then you can reselect. I was, it was so annoying not being able to do that. So leave it that. We'll add some more chamfers. Let's try this one, command key again, click that, and we'll say eighth of an inch. Looks all right. Kind of want these to be a little bit more. So I want these to be more, but I don't really want to cut into that. So we can say plus ten thousandths of an inch and see what happens. So that works. And then the bottom of this, I never like sharp lines. So you can you can chamfer them or you can fill it. Since we already used chamfers, I'll just keep using chamfers. Sixteenth of an inch. You know what? Take that back. Let's tr let's look at a fillet. What does that look like? way too much and really I mean since we're using the 3d printer it's gonna be everything's filleted anyway we don't have an actual a sharp edge maybe I had a super super tiny nozzle I might I don't know these are okay just to leave them there I mean I just like those what's gonna be touching the board okay I think that looks good. Um, this is good. So I'll go ahead and you can save the file. I'll save it, but the big thing is just preparing it to print. And so if we right click, save as STL, gives us this option. It's already selected. Uh, preview mesh, refinement high, that's fine. That works. Okay, so now we'll go over into Cura and prepare the file for printing. So I've got green loaded into the printer right now. I don't really want to change it out. So I'm just going to leave it. Here's, let's zoom in. It did load super tiny. Okay. 
I scaled it by 2540 because 25.4 millimeters is in an inch. So 2540% will give us the size we want. Now, I'm going to do two at a time. I could probably do four at a time, but I know two at a time will work. It will work fine. Four, I kind of don't want to do that as much as just for layer adhesion. It seems to be that it doesn't work as, as well. But, I mean, it could just be me. It might not be anything about it actually working as well or not. So we can right-click, duplicate model, and give us two. Here, the center of the bed. Or the front, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. So printing them on their side, this is what I, I kind of planned on, mainly for that hole. Uh, actually, just so, honestly, so it doesn't have support here. The only thing that's bad about this is to think about is when the screw is screwed through, if you screw it too tight, you will split it in half because it will split. It's a lot weaker this direction. If we print it, the layers like this, if we're actually using this as a clamp and you have the layers going this way, so if we flip it 90 degrees to where this is the bottom surface, then that would be, the, it could delaminate if it's really, if you know, if you have a lot of force squeezing it, it could actually break along this way. So it's kind of, you know, either way is fine with this. I choose to print it like this way, so then I get a nice finish on my, my top here. And then I'll have a nice finish on the bottom. And I don't have to use support or anything like that. So that's why I'm choosing this way. And, you know, I could probably get a good finish on this surface if I print it. You know what? I'll Actually, I'll print uh, two sideways and two, two the other way. And we'll just kind of see what they look like. So let me, let me print do these first. And then I'll go in and, you know, rotate them over. So... Go ahead and look at layers. We'll see what the settings that I had on this already. So I've got 1.6, that's four walls. Uh, that's fine. The last thing I printed, that's what it was. Infill density. This is probably okay. Right now it's saying 27 minutes, which is really quick. And... 245, 60 degree. These settings are all fine for green. The flow on this filament seems to be, I'll go ahead and do 108. Um, I've got the right diameter in, but it seemed that it wanted to have the flow increased a little bit just for adhesion between layers. And that was mainly determined from the first couple layers. And the top layer didn't bond as well on a previous part I did. So everything else was fine for the, the last print that I did with this. If, if you have any questions on settings, please just ask me. I mean, I didn't go over every single little setting, but I can make a video just on that with what I do if you really want. It does not matter to me. So this is fine. I'll go ahead and save these out. Uh, whiteboard mount. So we'll call it whiteboard side because we're going to print these on the side. And then we'll print some more on the on the, the bottom. Okay, these we will flip on the side. So I'm gonna go to solid. I'm gonna go ahead and I'll just delete one. We can rotate this one. Okay, maybe it wants to be turned sideways so I can. And then we can duplicate it. Move that on the other side. Okay, so now since there's an overhang, we need support. So this is the exact same profile we used before. And we'll go into wherever support is. Support, right here. So we'll click Enable Support. Support placement. Everywhere is fine. Everywhere means that if there's something else, it will... Like another overhang here, it'll place it on top of this. So I actually even have, uh, I think it's called towers. So use towers, I have that enabled. 
And you can, I'll slowly scroll through my settings and you can kind of see. You can copy those, if it, you know, assuming it works, it should work fine. So Towers is really cool. I've been using this on a couple other things I've printed with supports and you can't really tell with this, but it actually will use less filament and sometimes the shape will have smaller spots and it'll get larger and larger and connect to more surface area. So it's pretty, it's really neat. It's a really neat system. Now the interface layer, I think on, we'll see how, what spacing I have, uh, support top distance. So 0.1 millimeters, it should be fine. I don't, I don't, I think before I was able to pull it out and it actually gave me decent support for, for what it is. So I'll just leave it and we'll go ahead and, you know, save this. This is just some close-up shots. So this one is the one printed on top with support. You can see the bottom's a little bit rough. The left is the one printed on the top. The right is the one printed on the side. Here's the one printed on the side with the screw. It actually, the hole printed good. It's a lot better than the one that was printed from the top. Here's the screw going. This one, is, like I said, it's a little bit tighter. The whiteboard itself is actually a piece of shower board from Lowe's. I mounted it, you know, just put these into studs on the wall and leveled up the whiteboard. And I use four. So this is just a four by four foot section of, of the board. And it's just got four of the, the mounts and it works perfectly fine. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks.